Welcome to Laptop Powerwall episode 26, installing the VMS and breaker switches. Here I'm just pulling out the wires that I used to have and putting the, the VMS and breaker switches in the position I think they should be, moving them around, trying to work out what the absolute best location might be. That yellow piece of plastic is what's known as FR4, which is printed circuit board base a sheet of fiberglass basically and I have a whole lot of sheets of that left over from various e-bike batteries which are really good for sticking under their electronic boards to try and prevent them from shorting out to the rest of the battery which would be bad. The breaker switches are what are known as DIN rail mount switches so they clip onto a strip of metal which I've cut short and I'm screwing the piece of metal into the back of the box which means I can replace or pull out the breaker switches nice and easily using the DIN rail system. I've got two separate breaker switches so these will trip open i.e. they will turn off if they are subjected to a steady 20 amp so it's like a typical breaker switch that you'd have in your main house fuse box and it's also a switch so I can turn it off if I have to but it's a main fuse for the whole pack as well. That goes in nicely. Then moving on to the battery pack itself I'm disconnecting my old wire system and here is where I suddenly realise that where I want the VMS to go is further away than the length of the main power cables that I've got. And so I spent a very long time trying to get the VMS to be within the length of the power cables. Trying to figure, maybe I could put it down the side, maybe somehow upside down, inside out, around the other way. Eventually I came to the conclusion I had to extend my main power wires I'm doing that here. And for the black one I am also splitting it so that I've got an additional main power out in the top left of my power box. Which should be good when I'm joining the next power bank. Wrapping all that infused wire using my honking great 150 watt soldering iron to heat up all that thick wire. Then check my lengths and distances, that's all going to work. Chop that down and put some heat shrink over that. Then another layer of heat shrink just to be doubly insulated. Then solder the end of that onto the V- minus on my BMS. That's good and the position is good. Then the next wire to go on is what's known as P- minus, which goes to your load. So the VMS is designed to cut off the negative rail of your battery. The positive rail just goes straight from the battery to your load. The negative rail gets switched off when the battery is too high or too low. Then got everything back in the box and seeing how everything fits. Strip the wire. Then start working on the cabling for the charge in cables, which don't need to be as thick because it's never going to be charging at a rate higher than 10 amps. And that's just my arbitrary limit for the charging from the from the solar system. And then I connect the positive charge lead to the positive of the battery. And initially I put it on the battery side of the breaker switch. And then I thought about that a little bit longer and re figured it would be better to have the charger on the other side of the breaker switch so that if the breaker goes it will not be able to be charged and it will not be able to be drained by the load. Here goes the negative of the charge line and that goes to C- minus on the BMS. So this is a one of these generic uh, cheap Chinese BMSs. It's rated at 30 amps continuous, supposedly 60 amps peak. I will be happy if it can cope with 20 amps. That's my working assumption. I'm not going to try to go over 20 amps on this battery pack. So hopefully that BMS will cope. So the negative of the charge lead goes to C- on the BMS. 
And these are the charging leads, plus and minus load cables. Drink that in. And hey presto, let's plug in my watt meter and see if the switch actually does what we want. Yes, it does. Power's up. And it powers down. So if I even need to turn the battery off, that's what I'll use. Next, I'll reconnect my lovely LEDs. Once again, those are going on the load side of the breaker switches so that when the switch is off, the LEDs will be off. When the switch is on, the LEDs will be on. And that's about it, really. I'm just slapping it back on the wall. Ka-chunk! LEDs turn on. That's good to see. I haven't got a proper mounting for the front panel yet. It's just Velcro. Next, I'm connecting up the char the solar charger. Plug that in, and solar charger powers up. That's all good. Pumping juice into the battery. So now let's try plugging something into the load, like my watt meter, into that. That powers up. That's good. So next I'm going to plug in my 24 to 12 volt VC to DC converter, which I need to drive my e-bike charger. So I'll go and grab my bike, and plug the charger into the bike, and ta-da! That all seems to have worked okay. So the BMS will be balancing my seven groups, keeping all those in order. The BMS will also be looking out for overcharging, which is unlikely because I've got my solar charger set to only charge up to 28 volts for the whole pack, which is 4.0 volts per group. So that's well, well under the 4.2. Uh, and I'm doing that in order to increase the number of cycles that the battery will cope with. And the BMS will also disconnect the battery if the battery gets too low. So if the load tries to drain the battery flat, the BMS will disconnect the load. That's good. And then the breaker switches will guard against the load trying to draw too many amps out of the battery. And the switch will be if I need to switch the whole battery off as I'm mucking about adding another battery or whatever. And there we have it. All seems to be up and running quite nicely. Thanks for watching. See you next time.